Hello, so I thought I'd give you a quick look at the finished projects, the jam jars decorated with um, sea themed objects uh, containing vintage photos with a seaside theme. There are various different sizes and types, there's even a little mini food cooling bottle. Hope you enjoy having a play and I'd love to know what you think to the video. Today we're going to uh, decorate one of these little jam jars. This was a uh, Aldi's mint sauce one, I think. Um, as long as it's got a lid that fits, a fairly plain lid is better. Less decorating. We are going to put some vintage family photos in. So I've measured the depth and fitted these in so that they fit nice just so that they they fit once you're inside in between the top and bottom uh, not lips but just the top and bottom bit when you're putting your photographs in remember that you're not going to put them up so that they jam jars the right way up you're going to turn them the other way up so, these are very, very similar family photographs, but they have got a slight difference. So I'm going to put one either side. I then have just some book pages that are folded so it's the right measurement. And you roll it into a little roll. So it's back on itself and then pop it in the middle and it will expand out to fit the middle bit. That's so that if there's any gaps, you shuffle it round, all you see is some book pages. This one's actually got C on it, which is quite appropriate. So now they do tend to not push the cells right to the outside. So to overcome that, what I do is just put some packing in the middle. Something like some dried painty baby wipes. You're not really going to see much of them at all. Um, but just in case you do, I tend to use colours that match in with the project. So sort of blacks, whites, fairly palish colours with this one. What you could do if you'd brought a lot of a lot of shells and things off your trip to the beach, you could put lots of shells and things that you've collected on your trip in there. Put the lid on, turn it the right way over, check your pictures are they are. I give it a tap to make them move down. And then get, and you need quite a long length of string for this. More than you would think because at the bottom, get this one I've done before, it goes in quite a lot so you need to fill that in so it more or less goes straight down and then it doesn't look as top heavy when it's finished. So I think right that's the one that I like the most that's going to be the front. Hang on to one end and just basically go round and round and round in the little gap between the lid and the start of the jam jar. Tie a knot, double knot, I 
nice and secure. I cut it off with a little bit and then just fray it so it just looks rustic. You see it goes straight down now rather than going in. Now this one I did wonder whether it would be quite nice to have some of this tape but I don't know if it's the right width. Might be, it might not. Hmm. Yes, I might put that on at the end. We'll see. I'll finish it first. So on the top, this is what you want to cover up. I've got cheesecloth. I've got some green mesh. I've got some blue. I think the blue's a bit harsh. I've got some bits of cloth. I could stick those on first. And then I've got some of this, which is, this is actually Halloween decorative. Um, I think it was called netting. It was from one of the cheap shops anyway. So, you can use heavy gel medium or you can use your glue gun. I would recommend the heavy gel medium because you get a bit more wiggle room and it will be a bit long lasting. The glue gun does work but the thing is after a while it may come unstuck because that's glue guns aren't quite as long lasting. So I'm just teasing my cheese cloth out because mine's an industrial glue gun and it gets very very hot. I've got a little bit longer to play with. If you've got a quite a cool glue gun you'll have to work a bit faster but just you're just putting it on so it covers the edges of your untidy jam jar. I quite like little wispy bits coming down like that so that's the cheesecloth. I think I might have a little bit of the green. Scrunch it up for a bit more texture. I don't want that white bit in there. I'll have that there I think and I'll have some of the netting so a bit more that glue as I say it is very very hot you can use with to poke it down but then you risk your spatula getting stuck to it like it, it is there and then I'm going to have a little bit of this as well well, the sun's come out so this will probably be very 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 overexposed pictures. That's it and a bit more dangling down you can always trim it off later. So that's those. The next step is just to arrange your shelves. I quite like this one on here so I'm going to put some glue and I'll be very careful, very very careful with your fingers. I'm going to stick that one on there. What you're trying to do is cover all these untidy bits. I sometimes put a little blob in the middle because that will drop down and stick it on more. of sea glass here which has got a pattern on it. I've got some shell. Yeah. So if you just sort of put them on and think where you want them and think yeah that's right, stick it on with your glue. And you can if you're clever, get some raised up bits by putting the glue on the end and then wiggling them between the 
pieces that are already stuck on. Now if you've got micro beads at this point you will put pour your micro beads over. I haven't got any micro beads. So what I might do is get a little bit of sand out of my jar. This is Cornish sand. Sprinkle it over and it will stick to the hot glue, hopefully. And then you can tip the excess away later. So that is my jar done. I'm just going to tip away this excess sand and then you can see be careful because if the glue is still wet it might come off and you can see that's our, our jar done quite a quick and easy project and you can do all different ones I think I possibly will Put the tape around there, but I'll choose the words that are fitting with the project. And that's it.